So the National Assembly will debate the Palapala report come the 6th of December this year. It's just over two weeks from now. And this was decided following an extension request from members of the three-member independent panel. MPs have uh, since decided to delay this year's recess so that they could deal with this report and its content. Let's get reaction uh, from political parties following this decision. Uh, Voter Vessels is with the Freedom Front Plus and, in fact, is the chief whoop there. We're also joined by Wayne Thring, who's with the African Christian Democratic Party, uh, who's the, uh, the deputy president of that organization. To both our guests, thanks for your time. It's lovely to have you on the program. Uh, Voter, perhaps let me begin with you. My understanding is that just one day has been set aside to unpack the contents of this report. The obvious question is, is that enough time? Well, it will be very tight to uh, to actually unpack the reports in one day, but uh, usually those type of reports are tabled in Parliament, in the National Assembly, they are debated, and then it will be most probably referred to a committee. Um, but there will now be an outcome as to, is there any prima facie evidence that the President did uh, miss or abuse his powers, that he did transgress, that should then be investigated. We were very worried that the report will be delayed to the next term, um, to next year, and uh, that will be a political play to have the ANC's national conference um, be done or take place before the outcome of this report. So we are happy that the report will be dealt with before the end of this term, I think that is a good thing. And I think the extension is reasonable because it is a very serious uh, issue. Yeah. Wayne, because you are pressed for time, there's going to be, uh, you know, a need to use that time wisely, so to speak. Uh, is there any yeah. kind of planned strategy, at least as far as you know, around how this report should be handled once MPs can finally delve into it? <clears throat> well, like a voter, it's indicated, I think that it's the, the outcome of the report has got to come before Parliament. Parliament uh, would then debate it um, <clears throat> once, and if the report finds against the President, um, then a special committee has to be a select committee, ad hoc committee has to be instituted, um, and that particular committee then has to do its work. Once that committee uh, has done its work uh, and they come up with uh, a particular outcome, uh, those recommendations then come back to Parliament. Uh, Parliament would debate it, uh, debate it again. Uh, but this particular process, uh, after the Select Committee brings its report to, to Parliament, um, it requires just a simple majority in terms of whether you actually have that uh, ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are hopeful that members of the ANC uh, where it's just a simple majority is, is required, will not block uh, the outcome if there is a finding against the president. Yeah. Uh, clearly, uh, the ACDP has been consistent, and we have said that no one is above the law, and this, this includes, includes the president. We've done this with uh, former President Jacob Zuma, where the ACDP has also been at the forefront of indicating that Mr. Zuma has um, a, a needs his day in court, and uh, he too must be held accountable. Uh, and so the same principle applies with, uh, with President uh, uh, Ramaphosa. So we are hopeful that uh, if there is a finding, um, that uh, that particular, the parliament will have that select committee or ad hoc committee uh, in terms of the, the, the impeachment process. Um, if uh, the ANC used their majority, however, to, to try to stall the process, then there may be a judicial uh, the, the, the matter may be taken on review uh, and a court process may have to unfold. Yeah, I'm glad that you've taken us there, Wayne, because um, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. You've <laughs> mentioned twice that you're hopeful that ANC MPs will not block it. But are you realistically optimistic that that is what will happen, given just the caucus's track record around these issues when it comes to, you know, quote unquote, protecting their leader? Oh, sure. I think that unfortunately that the, the, the ANC have a, a history of protecting their leader. And even though there may be prima facie evidence against uh, Ramaphosa in this particular case, and we believe that there is, uh, <clears throat> you know, $4 million, uh, some, some of the evidence indicates it could be even up to $20 million, but irrespective of the amount, uh, there is a case to, 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 to be answered. How did that money get into, into the country? Uh, was it declared? You know, and, and if you bring in foreign currency, the South African Reserve Bank needs to have a record 
uh, of that currency. Does the South African Reserve Bank have a record? The fact that they're actually asking Mr. Ramaphosa uh, to provide evidence seems to indicate that they do not have a record. And if they do not have a, a record, then the money has been brought into the country illegally. So clearly, there appears to be prima, uh, prima facie evidence uh, that Mr. Ramaphosa actually has a case to answer. So, so we are hopeful that the, the ruling party will break rank in this particular case, those uh, who respect the rule of law, that they will break rank um, and honor uh, the Constitution uh, and our judicial process uh, and the, the rules of, of, of the Constitution in terms of a sitting president. Yeah. You know, uh, Voto, we, we can't really blame the opposition for making a meal out of this, you know, um, speaking about towing the party line, uh, it's all love and fear in war, some people say. And I wonder to what extent, even as the opposition, you are worried that in some ways or the other, you're getting involved in the factional battles that are taking place within the ANC, whilst there are substantive, um, you know, facts around what might have happened and perhaps what might have not happened and the kind of answers the president needs to provide. We cannot ignore the uh, players that are involved in this, for lack of a better term, and what this might mean for their own leveraging of whatever power exists within the ANC. No, absolutely. But uh, like you say, the fact of the matter is where there's merit in wrongdoing, it should be investigated and there should be consequences. And I, I say this a lot in Parliament, and it's a cliche, but history never repeats itself, but man always does. And what the NC is currently doing, you know, we also suggested that there should be a joint committee investigating the, the, uh, the, the other um, aspects of this whole case. The high-level panel is investigating if the president abused his power. But if he abused his power, there's also involvement of other departments, other uh, political heads and other officials. Um, and that should also be investigated. Already, the ANC blocked that process, said, no, at our committee, we're not doing that, um, and we're actually protecting, once again, uh, the president. And uh, it's a repetition of what happened from 2009 up until 2017. Uh, if we go and look at Nkandla, all those, uh, the things that happened, even the, the, um, what happened with regards to the Guptas, the opposition um, re repeatedly said in Parliament that there's uh, there's, uh, where there's allegations, it should be investigated. And the ANC ignored that, and now it's nine last years. It's not, it could have been prevented, and once again the ANC is not doing that. Yes, it's because of factionalism, and it's because of the national conference that ca that's coming up uh, later this year. But we as a country cannot afford this. Where there's transgressions, where there's allegations of transgressions, it should be investigated, and especially when the president is involved, because if you go and look at the whole country, it sets the example. That's why there is so much corruption, so much wrongdoing at municipal level, at provincial level, because the example is set that there is a protection of wrongdoing, that allegations are not investigated, and that cannot be uh, tolerated any longer. Yeah. What shouldn't be lost to us, of course, uh, Wayne, is that this process is also, in one way or the other, uncharted territory. We've never really been here, even with the Section 89 investigation with this independent panel and what follows thereafter. From your vantage point, is there enough clarity, even among MPs, about how to actually deal with this so that, in a stroke of irony, it's not the integrity of the process that ends up letting the president go if he does, in fact, has a case to answer? Well, whether all of the members of parliament um, have clarity in terms of the process is, is uh, uh, I'm not able to, to, to answer for, on, on their behalf, but I can clearly say that um, very many of the MPs on the opposition side um, are, are very clear about the process. Uh, we've had, obviously, as the opposition, uh, we've had meetings. Uh, we've come together as the opposition to look at the particular process. We have discussed uh, the Section 89 process very thoroughly. Uh, we've shared information as well with, uh, as the opposition. Uh, we've come together in terms of, as voters indicated, uh, the calling for the ad hoc committee uh, also to be instituted. So there would have been a dual process, uh, the impeachment, Section 89 impeachment process, as well as the 
the ad hoc committee, bearing in mind that you did have actually an ad hoc committee during the time of the former president, Jacob Zuma. Mm. Um, that ad hoc committee actually went and did a, uh, that's members of parliament themselves who went to Nkandla uh, to have a look at things like, you know, the fire pool and whatever else that they needed to investigate um, and came back with their, with their report. Uh, but again, the, the, the ruling party used their majority to actually block that particular process. So I think that um, in terms of the opposition, the opposition is very clear. In fact, those parties in, in the opposition, not, not all of the opposition, but very many of the opposition, are very clear in terms of the processes. Um, and, and we hope that uh, at the end of the day, uh, that sanity prevails, uh, the rule of law pre- prevails, um, and that uh, Mr. Ramaphosa, who has, we believe, a case to answer, is held accountable. Yeah. Speaking about uh, sanity and the likes, the ATM is also part of the opposition. They uh, have an interest in this case as uh, the organization that brought this motion forward to begin with. Um, yes. I, I do wonder whether you agree with their stance so far. I mean, what they've said, and I'm going to paraphrase it, is that um, if the findings of this report are not that the president has an answer to, they will go to court and challenge it. it mm. It's expected, don't get me wrong, but I mean, that's also not how you view processes. That's not how it works. You don't only give support to a process if its findings <coughs> are in line with what you agree with. Uh, let me just get your thoughts on that, um, Voters, as we round up our discussion about whether or not this is something you support as the opposition. Well, we can't go into a process uh, thinking that uh, <laughs> the outcome must be what we think it will be. Um, we will obviously have to look at the process to see if there's any procedural mistakes made. And I think, uh, once again, the extension that, that was asked for by the chairperson of the panel um, is an indication that they are taking the process seriously. Um, I think the reasons given for the extension indicates that, that they are considering all the um, evidence before them or the reports uh, that they have received, and I think that's, that's a, a good indication. If we go on a, on a review, um, then there would have had to be uh, some procedural mistake made. We don't think at this stage uh, that there are um, those mistakes uh, that, that we can see at this stage, but we'll have to look at the report itself. If it's, if it's just a, a hogwash type of report that's not taking every, everything into account, then there's procedural mistakes, and then a court process will be considered by, by other opposition parties um, to, to, uh, to make sure that uh, this is not just uh, something that's, that's, uh, that's just a, a rubber stamp, um, that there is an inquiry, but it's not actually... Uh, an inquiry, but at this stage there is no indication of that that is the, the case. Sure. Interesting times ahead. Vote of Vessels with the FF Plus, Wayne Thring with the ACDP. To both our guests, thanks very much indeed for your time.